Hi students, today we will study about damped oscillations. Our objectives are to identify the damped oscillations of a torsion pendulum. Determine the damping constant in the underdamping case for two values of damping current, 0.3 and 0.4 amperes. And finally, to explore the critical damping and overdamping cases. Nearly all objects, when hit or plucked or somehow disturbed, will vibrate at a particular frequency or a set of frequencies. This frequency is known as the natural frequency. Consider a block of mass M attached to the end of a spring with the block free to move on a horizontal frictionless surface. When the spring is neither stretched nor compressed, the block is at equilibrium position. When the block is given a displacement x from its equilibrium position, the spring will exert a restoring force on the block that is proportional to the displacement and in opposite direction. The restoring force is given by Hooke's law. F equals minus Kx. The system that behaves in such way is said to exhibit simple harmonic motion. The solution of the shown differential equation is x equals a note cosine omega note t plus phi, where a note is the amplitude and omega note is the natural angular frequency. The body will execute free oscillations with a constant amplitude forever. We have assumed an ideal frictionless situation where there is no loss of energy. Real-world systems always have some friction, and oscillations do die out with time. The friction force is a retarding force and causes the amplitude of the oscillation to decrease with time. The decrease in amplitude caused by the retarding force is called damping. Then, an additional force will be included due to friction, F equals minus BV, where V is the velocity of the oscillating body and B is the constant that describes the strength of the damping force. The equation of motion of the body becomes sigma F equals F spring plus F damped. In this case, the solution to the differential equation will be x equals a note e to the power minus bt over 2m times cosine omega t plus phi. Now, we assume that the damping constant gamma is b over m. It is clear that the amplitude is not constant but decreases with time because of the exponential factor e to the power minus gamma t over 2. The angular frequency of the oscillation is no longer equal to radical k over m, but is somewhat smaller. So, omega is equal to radical omega naught squared minus gamma squared over 4. The figure shown illustrates the displacement as a function of time for a damped oscillator. It shows that when the retarding force is much smaller than the restoring force, the amplitude decreases in time. The dashed line represents the exponential factor in the equation. If we go back to the equation omega equals radical omega naught squared minus gamma squared over 4, we will notice that there are three different types of damping. 
under damping, critical damping and over damping. In the case of under damping, since the retarding force is smaller than the restoring force, the value of omega will be positive and we will have many oscillations. In critical damping, where the retarding force is equal to the restoring force, the value of omega is zero. The system will return to zero in minimum time, and there will be no oscillations. In over damping, since the retarding force is greater than the restoring force, the value of omega is negative. The system will take a long time to return to zero, and there will be no oscillations. For the underdamping case, where A equals A naught E to the power minus gamma T over 2, considering the natural logarithm of both sides of the equation, if lin A is plotted as an ordinate versus T as an abscissa, a straight line is obtained. The slope of the line is minus gamma over 2, from which the damping constant gamma may be determined. Equipment list The torsion pendulum which consists of a rotatable wheel made of copper with a spiral spring attached to its axis made to produce damped oscillations. By use of the built-in electromagnetic eddy current brake, different amounts of damping can be introduced to the system. Power supply unit for the torsion pendulum. Direct current ammeter. Digital counter. Experimental procedures. We will connect the circuit. Connect only the electromagnet to the damping current output of the power supply. Switch on the power supply. Switch on the ammeter and be sure to choose the suitable range. With the damping current at zero, give the copper wheel a displacement about 17 cm from its equilibrium position and release it. Start the digital counter at the instant you release the copper wheel. When the copper wheel completes 5 oscillations, stop the digital counter.
Record the time taken in the data table. Calculate the period and the natural frequency omega note. Increase the damping current to 0.3 amperes. Give the copper wheel a displacement about 17 cm from its equilibrium position and release it. Start the digital counter at the instant you release the copper wheel. When the copper wheel completes one oscillation, read the amplitude and stop the digital counter. Record the amplitude and the corresponding time in the data table. Repeat the same procedure and record the amplitude and the corresponding time when the copper wheel completes 2, 3, 4 and 5 oscillations. Plot lin A as an ordinate versus time in seconds as an abscissa. From the slope of your graph, calculate the damping constant in this case. Calculate the angular frequency omega 1. To ensure that we have more accurate results, repeat the experiment again using damping current equal to 0.3 amperes. Increase the damping current to 0.4 amperes. Repeat the same procedure and determine the new damping constant and the angular frequency omega 2.
Again, repeat it using damping current equal to 0.4 amperes. Increase the damping current to 0.6 amperes. Give the copper wheel a suitable displacement and observe the oscillation of the wheel. Look how fast it's going now. Increase the damping current to 0.8 amperes. Now, increase the damping current to 0.9 amperes. It is still under damped. With this system, I cannot show you an example of critical or over damping since the current has to be so high that we begin to smell smoke. So we decided not to do that, but if I go to the point where you just don't smell smoke, then you're still under damped but you get a huge amount of damping. For safety reasons, don't forget to switch the current back to zero before turning the power supply off. Finally, disconnect the circuit.